Now let's start a casual tour through the different editor types. The editors in Blender are what you'll be using to accomplish tons of different tasks. So in the next few lectures, I'll go through each of them real quick and explain just some of the things you can do with them. So in each area, there's an editor menu at the left side of the header here. And here's the whole list of editors you can choose from. We'll start off with the 3D viewport editor, which is already loaded into the main area here. This is where the 3D magic happens and where you'll be visualizing and interacting with objects in your scene. And here you'll be modeling, texturing, animating, and a lot more. Up next, we'll go over the image editor. So let me split the area and I'll load in the image editor on the right side. Now in this editor, we can browse through all the images we have loaded into the blend file, including our textures. Like this texture here for the medieval house. Let me slide that over a little bit more. In this editor, we can also do things like create new images and even paint on existing images. For example, if I switch the mode over to paint, and I'll press the end key for the right side toolbar here. Let's choose a blue color and just paint on this. You can see we can paint on the image and it'll automatically update on any models that are using that image as a texture. And Blender actually has a pretty decent tool set for painting as well, so you can actually use Blender as your 2D software. Now in order to get this flat image to actually display on our 3D model here, we use something called UV unwrapping, which basically takes a 3D object and unwraps it onto a flat plane so that we can then paint textures on it. And for UV unwrapping, we use the UV editor. Now this looks pretty identical to the image editor, but we can't edit images here. In this editor, we edit the UVs of the meshes that we unwrap. So if I go into edit mode of the house here, for example, you can see that all the pieces of the model were unwrapped and aligned onto this flat plane. We've got all our walls right here, windows, we, got, we have the door there, the roof, and so on. And after you UV unwrap and align your UVs over here, then you can go ahead and paint textures within those different sections of UVs. So once you've got your model UV unwrapped and you have your texture painted, to get this texture to actually display in the 3D view and in renders, we use the shader editor. So here's where you create and edit shaders. Shaders are used to define how an object looks and responds to light. So here you can make things like wood shaders, metal shaders, fire shaders, and pretty much anything you want. To create these shaders, we use these things here called nodes. And from the add menu here, you can see there are tons of different nodes, each accomplishing different tasks. So the combinations are pretty much endless here. And in this example, we used an image texture for the house. So I'm using an image node here with that texture loaded in and I've connected that to the base color of our main shader node right here. That's what's making that image display in the 3D view and in our renders. And you'll learn all about all the different nodes and other things you can do with this editor in the shader section. Now moving on to the compositor editor down here. This editor is used for post-processing your renders, animations, and video sequences. So on the left side node here, we have our original render, and on the right side is the final composite. So in between these two, we can add in lots of different post-processing nodes to alter the image. Like for example, say I wanted to add a little bit more of a glow effect. I can add in a glare filter. Just plug it in right there. And let's change this to fog glow. And we'll change the threshold down to 0.05. So there we have a lot more glow in the scene now. And you can see the difference if I mute this and then unmute it. So this is basic post-processing stuff right here. You can even do things like add in some color balance. Maybe we'll make this look a little bit more like nighttime by adding some more blue to it. And there we go. So the compositor is insanely useful to get that perfect final look. So this is something that can be really important for your final product. So up next, we've got the texture node editor over here. Now this is used for creating different textures for things like the world and brushes. This is actually going to be replaced by a different system in the future, but I'll just real quick show you an example of what this does. In this example, I've created a custom brush texture here for sculpting. I've combined a brick texture with a cloud texture. And when I go to sculpt on the object, you can see it's generating sort of a grungy brick look on the surface. So that is the result of combining brick and cloud textures. All right, so that's gonna do it for an example of what that texture editor does. And now let's move on to the sequence editor. So here is the video sequence editor. This is Blender's awesome video editor. Here you can add in images, video clips, and audio, and edit your videos together, just like any other video editing software. You can split clips apart, you can move them around, you can add transitions, and you can also add modifiers to your clips for things like color balance, brightness and contrast, and things like that. So it's actually a pretty handy and powerful video editor, all packed into 3D software. Blender is pretty much the full package. You can do everything with this software. 
Next up, we have the Movie Clip Editor. And this will be used heavily if you're adding VFX to real footage, for which you'll need to do some motion tracking or masking. For example, here we've got some tracking points set up, and these track details in your footage and are used to match your 3D scenes camera to the camera in the footage. As you can see, for example, this one marker here is tracking the corner of this whiteboard, and it's gonna track it through the footage as long as it can. And we have all these other tracking points set up as well, and Blender will take all of this tracking information and use it to calculate how the camera is moving in the footage, and will apply this movement to the camera in your 3D scene. And this is what allows us to composite 3D elements into our footage and make it really look like it's part of that footage. And here are the final results from the open movie Tears of Steel. You can see just how much 3D is composited into these scenes, and they use motion tracking to make sure that the 3D scenes match up with the real footage. This is an amazing editor, and we'll get more into this later in the course. But for now, that's actually going to do it for this quick tour through the general editors, so I'll see you in the next lecture.